Hey there, and welcome to another Omni Eyeball Searing, Face Rubbing, Headache Inducing episode of What Happened, the show that was created to basically talk about Sonic the Hedgehog, and I guess by that extension, Jesus? Now you can't talk, let alone think, about the term video game disasters without having reserved a good chunk of your mind palace specifically for the blue blur. I mean, there's Sonic 06, Secret Rings, The Black Knight, Sonic Extreme, the... Uh, the Bioware one, your, your puny brain would get overloaded by visuals of creepy blue feet and knuckles glitches. So with that in mind, we're revving to go, speeding up on our little spinball of pent up energy to explode into the fantastic calamity that is Sega and Big Red Button's Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Our story begins in the futuristic war zone known as 2009. Two industry veterans teamed up to found Big Red Button, an up and coming new studio that did precisely neither of those things. Nothing was going up, and certainly no one was. Never mind. Those two veterans were Bob Raphae and Jeff Lander, who hailed from both Naughty Dog and Luxoflux, respectively. Bob had been with the Nasty Dogs for 13 years, having worked as a director of art on the first four Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter titles, as well as the first Uncharted. Jeff, on the other hand, was an experienced programmer on the True Crime series, specifically on both the West and East Coast varieties. East Coast, Beast Coast! <laughs> but more importantly than all that, Mr. Lander was instrumental in blessing planet Earth with a video game adaptation of Shrek 2. With these two seasoned hands, you'd think the contracts would just be flying across their desks fast and hard, but that wasn't the case for Big Red Button. Maybe because it wasn't the best time to start up a new company as lots of developers were actually being shut down at the time, but they went through a variety of pitches and game prototypes that never really enticed any publishers. However, one company that was always looking for cheap solutions to making video games, of course, was Sega, who were interested in rebooting Sonic with a more Western focus. Sales of the then current crop of Sonic titles, you know, these winners, weren't exactly smash hits. In fact, they showed a decline in profits overall, and Sonic's reputation wasn't exactly soaring because of it. Sonic was never good. Sega felt that the entire IP needed an overhaul and thought that with Bob Raphael's experience at establishing fresh IPs over at Misbehaving Puppy, he would be the one to give Sonic a brand new spin. <laughs> See, it says it says spin right in the script here. That was that was unintentional. The working code name for this take on the franchise was Project Apollo, an attempt to not clue people in that a big Sonic reboot was in the works with a Western developer, because aside from some spin-offs and diversions, was something that had never been attempted before. If you recall, this was going to be phase one of Sega's big dumb plan to split the universe in twain from then on out. Sonic Boom would be the North American series, while Sonic Team would continue their, um, usual efforts. What the heck is going on? The Sonic franchise would then pass off between both brands with different studios at the helm, which was again Sega trying to crib notes from other far more successful publishers. So, Big Red Button's first step was delving deeper into the lore than ever before, explaining Sonic's origins as well as Eggman's to really kick off this whole new universe on the right foot. Sega's official edict was to radically change parts of the Sonic formula, which were uh, moving to the right, I guess, with things like teamwork and co-op, along with placing a much greater focus on exploration and skill-based platforming. The game would be roughly divided between 80% exploration versus 20% speed, with a lot of those being vehicle-based. Big Red Button would spend more than a year fleshing out the world, storyline, and gameplay systems before eventually presenting their ideas to Sega of Japan for approval. This would be in the form of a vertical slice, a playable but brief section of a level that showed off all the main gameplay mechanics. Once approved, they'd then start building the rest of the game off of that blueprint, along with any feedback and changes from Sega, which, wouldn't you know it, would be a metric fuckton. This of course would include stuff that contradicted the other stuff that Sega wanted in the first place. <laughs> That's so Sega. But we'll get to that stinky bridge when we cross it. 
Now, another important thing that was always changing was what this Sonic game was going to be called, as two names in particular were being tossed around. One being Sonic Origins, since the game was exploring that, and the second was Sonic Synergy, which made sense due to all the co-op shenanigans. In fact, co-op wasn't just a throwaway mode or gimmick, but rather became one of the game's core features, as Big Red Button was pushing for four-player functionality and an online component to boot. It all sounded pretty ambitious but fortunately, Sega had asked Big Red Bun to target next generation systems, which obviously meant the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. In terms of engines, Sonic would use the one that, while unconventional, could boast pretty visuals well suited for the lush new world Big Red Bun was designing. Cry Engine 3, while not as common or familiar to most game studios, was still considered an impressive bit of tech at the time. During this phase of development, things were going smoothly, but as any stalwart What Happened fan should know, with Sega about you should never be too comfortable, lest a vat of gooey bullshit be unleashed upon your naive, unsuspecting head. Once Sega and Sonic Team, then headed up by newly promoted Takeshi Izuka, were shown the vertical slice, they started to ask for uh, thousands of changes. They felt what Big Red Bun presented was far too removed from what the franchise stood for, you know, despite that uh, being the whole point of the project. The game was too slow, they were no longer sure about those character designs, and they wanted more speed sections. They also asked for the ability to swim underwater to be removed so that Sonic and friends would instantly die as soon as they touched the deadly substance known as H2O. <laughs> You know, like in the old Sonic games. I mean, you know, like in the old Sonic 3D games. What? There were even some changes that were a bit weird. Like initially, the character of Cliff, this uh, thing right here, started off as an inventor, providing gadgets and the like to Sonic and Co. Like a lot of the other NPCs in the world, Sega requested some alterations, and for Cliff, it was to change his occupation as an inventor. Why? Well, this was due to an ironclad rule in the Sonic Bible, which stated that only Tails and Eggman can be inventors, which I assure you, I'm not making up. Finally, there was the real kicker, the storyline. You know, what most of the game revolved around? That had to be changed too, because apparently, Sonic Team wanted to try their hand at the Hedgehog's origins down the line, so they were uncomfortable with letting a Western developer tackle it first, despite this being the whole separate universe thing. <sighs> okay. So anyway, the epic tale involving Sonic and his initial friendship and eventual falling out with Eggman, all of it had to be redone. Ever wonder why in the finished version of Sonic Boom there's statues depicting ancient echidnas and hedgehogs and shit, but nobody really notices or says anything about it? That's why. All of that world building went to waste because despite some of the levels and scenery hinting at a grander tale, it was all scrapped for a thrilling narrative about Sonic beating a villain. Yo bro, them some fresh ideas. So, with the origin story all thrown out, what were they going to replace it with? Well, fortunately, Sega had just the thing. Oh no! They had struck another, completely separate deal with a French animation studio to produce a brand new computer animated cartoon which would be dubbed Sonic Boom and would also be aiming at that lucrative western market. Sega felt to keep brand continuity, Sonic Synergy would need to adopt this new world's aesthetic and tone and obviously the name as well. Now, while all of this was surely an RKO from out of nowhere to pull on Big Red Button, it fortunately wasn't a deal breaker, as changing storyline and character art wouldn't be really devastating to the project. That's because what Sega was about to announce next would definitely be devastating to the project. Game companies always ruin their beloved franchises. Not long after the game shifted to Sonic Boom, Sega informed Big Red Button that it was now going to be a Wii U exclusive. And no, you can't stop this. You know, the Wii U, one of Nintendo's biggest failures. Sega decided to enter an exclusivity deal with them, delivering three new Sonic games, including Boom, onto a console that didn't support CryEngine 3. Yeah, that makes sense. Big Red Button, as you can imagine, were in panic mode. What's more, this deal with Nintendo had a timeline. The game needed to be out in 2014, which left the studio slightly less than a year to make all this work. And it really didn't work. Okay, well obviously it did in the end, kinda. The game is playable, but what did it cost? 
everything. So, obviously, to make all of this happen, Big Red Button need to start scaling everything back and removing features. Now, while I wasn't able to cut everyone I wanted to, I have cut a lot of you. Four player co-op was removed, the same goes for any online features. More elaborate team up attacks were also taken out, and whole sections of additional story and dialogue were hastily sliced from the narrative. Some of those included instances of Sonic talking to Lyric or vice versa, where they'd insinuate they were familiar with each other, despite them not being actually familiar with each other. Who are you? Yeah. Amy congratulates a completely different cut character during an action stage. Way to go, Percy! Despite the fact that Knuckles is the only other guy on screen. Poor Knuckles. <laughs> there was a penultimate plane level where Tails gave chase to Lyric. There was also going to be some Chow collecting functionality. There was even going to be gamepad gimmicks where you'd use the touchscreen to control platforms and oohoodles of other stuff. Some of that stuff was entire cut sections of the world itself, as they initially only existed to support four player sections like water skiing as seen in this trailer. Oh right, that's the trailer. Yeah, this is a whole other mess of bubbling hedgehog poop. Remember this? Remember how, despite it looking different than most Sonic games, it still looked pretty cool, nice and shiny, lots of animations and effects, and tons of four-player action? Well, as long as Sega added this vague disclaimer, they could technically show you anything they wanted, even if it was running on high-end PC workstations. Which, you know, it was. None of this was Wii U footage, as it couldn't be because this trailer was cut days, maybe weeks after Sega told Big Red Button to start toiling in the barren and lonely Wii U mines. So all of this lies, some lies, some lies there. Ooh, ooh, that's a big lie right there. It almost makes you think that during the Colonial Marines debacle, that Sega learned a few magic tricks from one Randy Pitchford, King of the Charlatans. Thus entered a soul-crushing, almost year-long marathon of crunch to get all of this running on this. It was a tall order, as every single thing Big Red Button had designed, animated, and optimized was all intended for machines that greatly overpowered the Wii U. Now, not only did porting down to it prove to be a massive pain in the ass due to all the cut content, it was a logistical problem in the sense that CryEngine 3 didn't support the Wii U architecture at all. There apparently were some early attempts at getting the engine up and running for a theoretical port of Crisis 3, but EA and Crytek quickly abandoned that plan once they realized that it might actually result in them, you know, supporting the Wii U. Because of this, a whole lot of basic things were a whole lot of never figured out, like how you need to allocate GPU power to stream onto the gamepad. Big Red Button had to somehow navigate through all of these issues and eventually contacted Crytek for help. They had no other test cases or finished games to tinker with to guide them, as no one had attempted what they needed to do, so it's a miracle they got it to happen at all. Obviously, to very, very, very mixed results, but the game boots, and goddammit, that's something. Crytek eventually helped finagle Sonic Boom to run on a special version of the engine that no other game has used since. Now, aside from all that, a typical thing that most developers try to plan for is that when they're deep into production on a game, to start prototyping or designing a follow-up with a smaller team, like a sequel or DLC, just something. This is so that when the priority game is wrapping up, they can retain most of their staff and immediately start building the next thing when everyone's free. Unfortunately for Big Red Button, since the deadline was so tight and they needed all hands on deck, no other follow-up projects were in the pipe. Thus, in the final months leading to Sonic Boom's release, they had to let go of 50 people to cut costs, leaving less than 20 working at the studio. Sonic Boom released on November 11th, 2014, and remains one of the worst selling games in the series. Wait, wait. Oh, uh, I, no, uh, stand corrected. Sega took the time to come flat out and declare that Sonic Boom was indeed the worst selling Sonic game of all time. Like, what, what type of publisher goes out of their way to give additional information that shows how badly they fucked it up? That's, that's so Sega. What's more is that the blame couldn't even be directly shifted onto the Wii U, as Sonic Lost World had performed far better the previous year. Now, while the game was certainly looking shaky and franchise fans had problems with all the designs, the very idea of Sonic Boom itself was muddled and confusing, especially to casual fans. Get it? Not at all! 
Was this based on the cartoon or, or was the cartoon based on the game? Where does the 3DS version fit in? Wait, is this replacing the Japanese games or not? Even if development had gone smoothly, the handling of the split universe was just a really bad idea from its very inception. The poor sales aside, the critical and fan backlash to Sonic Boom was far, far worse than a slight dip in Sega's profits for that quarter. Bob Raffae stated in an interview with Polygon in 2015, We knew that historically Sonic games had been treated very poorly by the press, and we knew there was going to be some of that, but I was kind of taken aback by just the kind of hate that was being poured out. It was very disheartening. You know, you work your ass off for three years, you crunch like mad, you go through hell and back to try to make a ship date, and I've never experienced, like, hate mail in the past, and I'm getting people telling me I ruined their childhood, alright? Sorry about that, you know, I did the best I could. A former producer at Seg of America, one Stephen Frost, had a far more business-like view on Sonic Boom. In focus tests, we heard all the time people were sick of speed. Sonic was too fast. They wanted to slow down. Speed was shelved because we were under the impression people didn't want it. Speed is always a Sonic thing, and we didn't focus on that. Look, dude, I don't know who you got to participate in these focus tests, but are you sure you're not confusing them with no one? Regardless, he continues. The biggest mistake in Boom was adding too many features to it. It was too much to ask for any development team. I was tasked with creating an experience that appeals to an audience which doesn't play Sonic. If I could do it again, I would remove features and speed would be the main focus from the start. Oh, okay, I guess. Solo Sonic games? I don't know how long that can last. There isn't enough variety to sustain it. The future of Sonic games needs to be co-op, as it worked really well in Sonic Boom. Community and online play? That sustains it. In general, you need to do multiplayer and add online multiplayer aspects that will sustain and keep the franchise alive. Will it though? So with that idiocy still wafting in the air, what happened to Sonic Boom? Well, the cartoon show produced over 100 episodes, but it's still unclear whether a third season will ever come out, despite the show gaining popularity with its clever writing and fourth wall breaking humor. Let's act out my Sonic fan fiction. I'll pick something family friendly. <laughs> no, no, not that one. <laughs> Sanzaru, who developed Shattered Crystal and Fire and Ice, did far better in achieving a balance between the old and the new, but <laughs> then again, they didn't need to port Unreal 4 onto the goddamn 3DS, did they? They went on to several more projects like helping out on the recent Spyro remaster. As for Big Red Button, well, after the critical and commercial failure of Rise of Lyric, they closed their doors in May of... Uh, never? Wait, no, th th this... Okay, this can't... Be, no, wait. Big Red Button are... They're still in business today. No, no, I could have. Okay, whatever. They seemingly have transitioned to developing for both mobile and VR devices. Let's see. Uh, they worked on a John Wick game as well as their own IP, The Ark Slinger, which seems to have been a big success. Uh, good on them. So with that, I think we can definitively say that the Sonic Boom experiment is indeed over. And while it was a good idea on paper, yeah, it, not really. It wasn't even a good idea on paper. That's that's stupid of me. We don't know what Sega and Sonic Team is cooking up next, but you can bet whatever it is has a great shot at being featured here at What Happened in the Future. In the meantime, shout your suggestions in the comments below or light speed dash on over to the Flophouse VIP Patreon to officially vote on our next topic. See you next time and thanks for watching. Just look at that Sonic the Hedgehog guy. Whatever happened to him? Is he still a thing?